This week on El Cara Ham Radio, what do you do with a piece of land with no ham radio components installed? Well, you start looking around for a tower, and we're going to begin a series on installing a tower on a new piece of land. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, let's start out the video today for El Cara Ham Radio with what do we do about radio communications here at the new compound. And uh, I've got a lot of acreage here, about 30 acres. Obviously it's fall, beautiful. Some of the leaves have already come down. But what are we gonna do about ham radio? Well, one of the things I've decided to do is put up a shack. So you can see that we've got the cinder blocks outlining where I would like the shack to be. And uh, this is going to be a storage shack in addition to other things. But for now, it's going to be a shack that I can also put some of the radio equipment in. So about a 10 by 12, 10 across, 12 deep. And... Uh, that's where I'm thinking it's going to go. I'm also going to have power on the other side brought in from the power pole there in the distance. Kind of hard to see, but... And then water's going to come in and be next to the shack as well. And there'll be an RV hookup to the north of that, just on the other side there that's going north. So, some interesting things. Got a shack, place to put some of my equipment, that sort of thing. But then I've got all this, this acreage, and I thought, you know... <laughs> It'd be kind of cool if I had a tower. And uh, one of the members in our club that you guys have hopefully come to know, some of you have seen our other videos where we've been working in the Monticello Repeater location. We had to do a lot of tower maintenance there. And reinstall the anchors and uh, adjust the tension lines and, and the guy lines and all that stuff. He goes, hey, uh, Brian, I, I've found a tower for you. I said, really? He says, yeah. And he quoted me a price to put it up, get some antennas on it and all that. And I thought, well, that's, that's, a, that's a deal. So what kind of tower? Well, let's turn the camera this away. This kind of tower. Now, I've put these up on their feet, but normally these will be laying down in the grass. But for right now, this is uh, basically six sections, eight feet each, so or around 48 feet. When it's all said and done, you got it up and actually running. We've got to dig a hole for it somewhere in this general location. <laughs> and uh, probably a yard of concrete somewhere in that ballpark. He's the expert, so he's telling me what we're going to do and then we'll, <laughs> we'll end up doing it. But uh, this is a, a tower construct and uh, I'll put up a still and then let's talk about it back at the computer. So <laughs> we'll be right back. So right off the bat here, let me uh, utilize a website that is not ours. It's not affiliated with El Cara at all, but criticaltowers.com seems to have the latest information on this type of tower. They do have other towers and other information on this website, but again, not affiliated with uh, this particular company. But we're going to look at some of the information they have on their website, and if ultimately you're interested in getting a tower like this, then I'm going to recommend these folks. Again, they seem to have the most up-to-date information as it currently stands. Now, one of the things about this tower that I'm really uh, uh, happy about, again, there's a lot of towers out there, but this one became available, and so it's one of those, now that it's available, let's go ahead and make it work, is it's an all-steel tower. It's galvanized steel uh, so that it should last quite a long time. This particular tower that we're going to be putting up in KI4RWO is going to help me mostly. He's the one that does this for a living. Uh, is It's been laying at another hams location for a long time. I think it was up at, at some point and then it was taken down and then it just sat in a barn. And so it's there's no rust on it. It is practically brand new. In fact, all of the hardware and so forth has been sitting in a can with oil, so now all of that looks brand new. And looking at another page here off the criticaltowers.com website, you'll notice that they talk about the BX, HBX, and HDBX series of towers for 2022. 
that's what I really like about utilizing this website for information for this video. And again, not affiliated, but uh, they have the most current information, including this year. And you can see that they have towers from 24 to 72 feet. Now, this is probably the HBX or possibly the BX. We're going to do a look up here in just a second. Uh, there are different sections that you can purchase depending on the height above ground. This one is 48 feet. And as we'll see in a screenshot in just a moment, probably the BX version. But you can buy the other sections separately. I'm not saying they're cheap, but they are available. And so again, uh, you would want to look at their price lists and so forth, as we'll see in a few minutes. Now, this is uh, looking at uh, a warehouse that I'm sure that they have someplace. You can see a number of the towers. Each of the sections basically slides into the next one. So from a shipping standpoint, it's really, uh, really nice because they can keep it nice and compact. And in fact, when Ken, KI4RWO, brought it down to the compound, the new compound, uh, he had it in this arrangement with all of the sections nestled within each other. You can see the uh, pricing here that we're going to show in just a few minutes is based on April of 20, uh, well, April 21st of 2022. And uh, they're talking about direct factory pricing and all of that good stuff, which is nice. And you can see some of the other options that you can get, top plates for rotors uh, and that sort of thing, which I plan to probably put on, on this tower and some type of a beam that I can work some of the lower bands. But in any event, this tower is not made to be uh, for huge beams, uh, but uh, you can get a beam of about 10 feet uh, up on top of this tower with a rotor. And uh, we'll be talking more about that in a future part of the series. Now, this is on their website, so this is public information. And again, just using criticaltowers.com for the info since, again, they seem to have the latest information. And this is just a portion of this price list. Ultimately, you would want to get in contact with them. In my case, I have the tower sections, but I don't have a top plate. I don't have a mast. I don't have some of the other parts that I might want. In fact, this is probably the, sh the 48 version doesn't have certain sections for the top and the bottom that you can get. Uh, and so I may order some additional components from their website, not only to help them out, but because, again, they've got the, the, the best information that I can find. And sometimes you can find some of these components by working through your club. You may find that you have a ham getting out of the hobby that may have one of these towers, and they may already have some of these sections, some of these accessories. So instead of buying new, you might be able to get something from a ham that's in your club. Uh, always double check for that sort of thing. That's how I'm getting this tower is a, uh, a, a member of the club came across this particular tower and made it available. This is also some information about some of the wind limits for this tower with uh, a certain amount of uh, load, wind load, that you can place on this tower. Now, I'm not going to overload this tower. I just talked about a beam, but a beam is not high on my list. For some of you, a beam is exactly what you would want to run on this tower. For me, I'm at some distance now that I've moved to Middle Tennessee, uh, from the main repeater sites in Monticello and in Nancy, Kentucky. I want to make sure that I can reach those, uh, those repeaters. So I know there's going to be a Yagi pointed up in that general vicinity, uh, pointing north. And I also know that I'm going to be utilizing something at the very tip top, uh, uh, either a, uh, uh, some type of a unidirectional uh, antenna on the very top, and then possibly a beam towards the top of the tower, but below the mast. We'll see as we get into it, some of the options that are available. What you don't want to do is have to climb a tower twice when you're installing antennas. So we may try to do it all in one day, three different types of antennas on top of the tower. Now let's roll into some of the additional footage that I had looking at the property as well as the tower sections. You can see the uh, galvanization on uh, these uh, these steel sections. And again, I've only got six of the sections, so I'm thinking this is either the BX or the HBX version. There's an HDBX, which I think comes with all of the sections. This is just six of those. You can get the other sections. They're not inexpensive in today's world, but they are available if you want to go even higher. And again, this one is going to be 48 feet total. We'll have to dig a hole for this tower. 
probably somewhere in the neighborhood of a four by four type of square of concrete. Uh, and uh, we talked about a yard of concrete. It may be actually a little bit bigger than that. So it's going to require, you know, a decent amount of cement, rebar, and uh, uh ultimately the legs that you attach the widest section to. Uh, and we haven't decided if that's going to, if we're going to allow it to tip over or not. Uh, a lot of hams would want it to tip over to make it easier for maintenance and things. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, those legs you can purchase. You can also have legs uh, created or manufactured. Uh, talking to uh, Ken, we might actually have the attachment points to the concrete uh, manufactured for us, similar to how we did the uh, legs or the uh, the posts that we use at the Monticello site. We actually had those made instead of trying to purchase those. So we'll have to take a look at that, but digging a hole, concrete, and all of that is a big part of making sure that your tower has a good firm base and isn't going anywhere. And even with a good gust of wind, it's not going to tip over. The other thing that we really have to consider is grounding for this tower. And there's different ways you can think about doing grounding. I've seen a couple of videos where they did the grounding within the concrete, and then some comments about how uh, copper's a noble metal, but the rebar isn't, and you'll have different corrosion. Uh, so we may end up doing grounding just off the leg or legs of the tower outside of the concrete. We'll just, uh, we'll kind of play that one by ear for now, but I'd be interested in your comments down below. And so that's what we're going to be doing, folks. We're going to install a tower at the new compound, which I'm now calling Fangorn, for those of you from Lord of the Rings, uh, or Tiny Fangorn, as I'm going to be calling it. So come along as we do a tower installation, not a really tall tower, but something to get it off the ground so that we can do better DXing and reach into the repeater some 50 something miles away. And I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm KY4BDP for the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. Come along for this tower installation ride. Thanks for watching and 73.